like we have been doing. Lately we will be going through what it's called the Midrash, the talk over the parasha, the Torah portion. And today's Torah portion, it's called Korach, which is very interesting. It is a whole teaching by itself. Today we can divide the parasha in four sections, numbers, chapter 16, verse, verse 1 to chapter 17. We read about the revolt of Korah, Datan, and Abiram. In Numbers 17, verse 1 to chapter 18, we read the budding of Aaron's rod. In Numbers chapter 18, verse 1 to 7, we read about the responsibilities of the priests and the Levites. And in Numbers 8 to the end of the chapter, we read about the priests' portion that God gave them in the Torah. Mostly we will be speaking about the first two sections, the revolt of Korah and the budding of Aaron's rod. Also we will mention the other two, but to start with we're, gonna, we're going to talk about the revolt of Korah. And, um, we can notice when we read the Torah, we notice a build-up of rebellious atmosphere from the very beginning of Israel coming out of slavery. From day one, they started being rebellious. They, they started grumbling. They grumbled about leaving Egypt even on the day of crossing the Red Sea. Before God opened the Red Sea, they were seeing the sea before them and the, the Egyptians coming behind them and they were saying to Abraham in Exodus chapter 14, Verses 11 to 12, then they said to Moses, it is because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would be better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in Egypt. The wilderness. Now this is less than 48 hours after leaving, after departing Egypt. Now imagine leaving slavery, two days after you are grumbling and you wish you are back in slavery. Something that happens to many, many, many Christians even nowadays. Nowadays Christians, they come to the Lord, they are free from sin. A couple of days later, they are wondering, oh man, it was good when I used to get drunk. Oh man, it was good when I used to have drugs. Oh man, it was good when I had a lot of women to sleep with. It's the same thing. It's incredible. Slavery all your life and two days after leaving Egypt, you are already grumbling and you are free. You are free and you are grumbling. They hadn't even reached the Red Sea and they are already showing a negative attitude. God delivered them and they passed through the Red Sea. They also witnessed the destruction of the Egyptian army. Now they were a nation on the move. A nation on the move on the path to the promised land. Again, like I said last week, it is a journey from here to the promised land we are going through a journey like the Israelites in the desert. Like the Israelites in the desert, many of us grumble, many of us are rebellious, many of us still want to do things our way. And this will even come down further when we continue to study this parasha of today. But then they saw the miracle of crossing the Red Sea. They saw how God destroyed the Egyptian army, all of it, only Pharaoh left, was left alone. Still, what happened in Exodus 15? If we go to Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 to 25, we see they now they are grumbling about the lack of water. 
Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah for they were bitter. That's where we get the word more, bitter, Marah. Therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses saying, what shall we drink? Then he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree and he threw it into the waters and the waters became sweet. Then he had made for them a statute and regulation and there he tested them. Again, this was only three days after crossing the Red Sea, after witnessing a big miracle. Yet, they already had forgot what God had done for them so far. Understandably, they were thirsty, but they failed the test. Instead of crying out in trust, they grumbled against him. You see the difference? We are not to grumble, but we are to seek God in trust. We cannot go through all the scriptures, but then again, they grumbled about the lack of food. You remember then God had to send the manna? And then they grumbled about the type of food. They've had enough manna. Then they wanted something else. They wanted meat. They wanted cucumbers. They wanted melons. They even grumbled about the inhabitants of the promised land. Worse, they even grumbled against their leaders. And grumbling against their leaders they were grumbling against God. Now, when I say leaders, I mean people who are anointed from God to lead a group of people. I'm not talking about a man who says, all right, now I'm a leader, I'm leading this group. We will see later on why. Exodus 16, verse 8, it says, Moses said, this will happen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and bread to the full in the morning. For the Lord hears your grumblings, which you grumbled against Him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us. This is Moses talking about himself and Aaron. Your grumblings are not against us, but against the Lord. Remember, Moses was anointed. Moses was a sort of a messiah for the Israelite people, bringing them out of Egypt. Aaron, as we will see soon, was anointed by God to be the spiritual leader of Israel. Psalm 106, verses 24 and 25, it says, Then they despised the pleasant land. We already knew that they grumbled about the inhabitants. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe in his word. But grumbled in their tents. They did not listen to the voice of the Lord. Ultimately, the grumblings against the blessings from God, the circumstances of God, against the plans of God and the leaders of God are against God. We need not forget that grumbling brings death. We all know the story of Korah, that God killed him from for coming against their God-chosen leader, therefore against him. And we also know from Proverbs 17.22, what happens when we grumble? Proverbs 17, 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. You grumble, you grumble, you grumble. You are very negative. It dries up your bones. It kills you. Grumbling, even if it does not kill you physically, but it will surely kill you spiritually. Spiritually, you will be dead. This brings us to the second point of today's parasha study, the budding of Aaron's rod. The budding of Aaron's rod. In chapter 17, 16, 
we see the people again grumbling against Moses and Aaron even even after God's instructions to melt the silver of the censers and cover the altar with them as a sign for the people after what happened to Korah, God said, listen, take the censers that represent those people, melt them, cover the altar, so they will be as a sign to the people. When they see that silver, they will remember that if you grumble against God, you are dead. Again, we see people dying with the plague because of their rebellion. Even after all this happened, God had to send a plague because the people were grumbling. And then we see God giving instructions for all 12 leaders to bring, to bring in a rod which Moses placed in front of the tabernacle. And uh, the instructions were that every leader, 12 leaders, one for every tribe, will bring this rod and they will engrave the name of the tribe on it. When the day after Moses checked the rod, he noticed that, the, that Aaron's rod had budded. Not only, not only, it also gave fruits, which is a miracle overnight for a bad rod to give fruit. We'll talk about it. What was God saying with all this? God was confirming that the priesthood belongs to the tribe of Levi. That's what God was saying with all this. Listen. I choose this tribe, the tribe of Aaron, the tribe of Levites, to be the priests in my... Oh, man, I don't think I have all the time to explain all this, but wow, this is what got Korah thinking and planning and, and arguing in his mind, and then he had to collect the leaders, and they had to go against Moses and Aaron because of all this. He gathered 250 Levite leaders, Levite leaders, because Korah, he was a Levite as well. He gathered 250 leaders to oppose the leadership of Moses and Aaron. What did they want? They wanted to take over the leadership of the nation. Moses was leading the nation. Aaron was leading the nation spiritually. That's what they wanted. And that means that the Levites are the spiritual leaders of the nation of Israel. Now remember what the word says, the word of God will come from where? From Zion, in Israel. Who will be putting forth the word of God? The Levites. No wonder Isaiah says in chapter 2 verse 3, And many peoples will come and say, many peoples, not people, peoples from every nation, many nations will come. And say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his way, and that we may walk in his path. For the law will go out forth, will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 4,500 people were affected with the plague which came upon the nation due to the rebellious atmosphere that Korah created. And this proves the importance that God gives to his leaders. You come against my leaders, you're dead. Oh. As I said, we saw an overnight miracle. Aaron's rod budded, it grew flowers, but not only flowers, it even produced almonds overnight. What does it mean? As I already said, a dead rod coming alive overnight. What, what, what does it remind you? Who does it remind you of? Who was dead and now is alive? A man, Yeshua, Messiah. That is a proof that our spiritual reader is Yeshua. It's a proof that Yeshua is our spiritual leader. It is him we need to follow. And as I always say in my teachings, who is Yeshua? The written word made flesh. So if you are following Yeshua, you have to follow the written word. You cannot say you are following Yeshua if you are not keeping the Sabbath holy. And by Sabbath I mean the seventh day, Saturday. You cannot say you are following Yeshua if you are not keeping his feasts. But you are celebrating the pagan feast of Christmas and the pagan feast of Easter. 
You are not following Yeshua. You are following somebody else. Now that's up to you to check who you are following. But if you are not following God, there is only one other spirit that you can be following. And that's the enemy. Having said that, we need to understand that until Yeshua comes, we are not under the priesthood of the Levite. Although the ministry is there, but the office of the priest of Levi is not there at the moment until Yeshua comes. But we are under the Melchizedek priesthood. And that's why I told you, and we need to be careful, guys. We need to be careful about the fact that we do not know who might be anointed or not. Somebody might come in. We might meet somebody in the streets who is anointed from God to give us a message. Somebody might come in even now and I will say, listen, this, this, this and this. And we'll go, wow. Why? Because God has anointed that man to give his message. Even Paul says we need to be careful when we entertain strangers. There might be even angels from heaven. Wow. Do people believe in angels anymore? I don't think so, but it's a pity because they are there. <laughs> they are here, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I have to hurry up a little anyway. But um, <laughs> the death of Korah, the death of Korah and his followers. How did Korah and his followers die? The air swallowed them. Now, have you ever seen a movie where people walk on quicksand and they are gone? That's what happened to them. But have you ever realized that it's the only time that God used that method to kill somebody? And you know why? Why did they have to go through that death? Why not the plague? Why not something else? Now, this is another study which I don't have the time to explain because it goes deep in the Hebrew language. But guys, what happened was this. God said to Aaron, you and your sons, you and your children, you go in the Holy of Holies, you go inside the temple. You dismantle everything when, when, when you are about to leave the place. You dismantle everything. You cover everything in a dolphin skin. And the word here is buried. To cover something with a dolphin skin, the word used in Hebrew is to bury, bury it. So they cannot see it from outside. Because if they can see it from outside, they will be dead there and there. They were not allowed to see the holy things in the Holy of Holies. Only Aaron and his children. Wow, now you get it? Why Korah said, whoa, what makes you think you are holy? We are all holy. God is among us. No, God never thought, I am among you. God said, I will come in the Holy of Holies and speak to you. So God said, all right, this is how you die. You are jealous for the buried things. Now you'll be buried. That's why the earth swallowed him. But if you read, even before this parasha of today, you will see the instructions that God gave to Aaron. I didn't write the scriptures, but, but there's instructions. Aaron and his children were the only ones allowed to go in. And then he said, you go out and you give them the instructions. Okay, you, you don't look over there. Your job is to carry this. Oh, so you get to do all the easy job covering and I, and I have to do the hard thing to carry it. You see, Korah, what Korah was thinking all the time. As I said, Korah was a Levite. His job was to carry things. But no, he was jealous. He wanted to be in the holy place. He wanted to see the holy things. He wanted to touch the holy things. That's why he had to die the way he died. Numbers chapter 18 verse 1 we see the responsibility of the priests and the Levites again as I said 
this office is not there today because there is no temple, but it will be interesting to study it so we know what used to happen and what will happen in the millennium when the temple is there, when Yeshua is leading and the Levites are restored under Yeshua. And they will be going through the same services that they used to do back then. Again, Numbers 18, from verse 8, then we see the priest's portion. As I said, nowadays there is no temple, there is no office, so this part of the Torah is for the Levites. Now, I, I, I know how people deceive people. Now, it's not for the leader of the congregation. It's for the Levites. God gave a portion of everything from everybody to the Levites, not to the leader of the congregation. Clear enough? Praise the Lord. As I always say, the Torah portion is something which is huge, it's vast, and um, if you study it, maybe you have been studying it, hopefully you, you study it during the week, starting from tomorrow when I'll send you the, the program, how to study it, everybody gets his own teaching, because that's the word of God, it's so big. If somebody else is here, he might give another interpretation, very different from mine, but that's the word of God. Amen? All right, we're going to break for five minutes and then we start worshiping the Lord because today um, uh, we will not be actually using the guitar, uh, but we have some exciting worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.